In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at some of our temperature anomalies over the whole summer so far. So we're going to be just taking a look at that. And we're going to be taking a look at some upcoming storminess as things continue to look active. Be sure to check out our prestige weather in the description and pinned comment down below for weather consulting. We do weekly calls for you guys, early access to those seasonal and monthly forecasts over there. And we have more things down the pipeline that we're extremely excited to release for you guys. So more value on the way. It's only $4.99 a month, so be sure to check it out. Let's get into things and we're taking a look at the past 45 days, aka the entire summer so far. And as you can see, you look coast to coast. I mean, there's been a couple of warmer areas here, uh, a sliver there of the northern United States and then some of the south central here. But if you are outside of these two areas, it has been a colder summer overall. Um, two particular areas that we've been watching this is the over the Rockies towards that southwest coast. As you can see, this area has been warmer for quite a while. And those totals are going to continue to kind of come down as far as how cold it has been. Uh, and then the east here, we've had a pretty large area of below normal temperatures. And this isn't any sort of slight, slight, slight below normal temperatures. This is about five to seven degrees below normal for a lot of these areas, which over a 45 day period is quite significant. Okay, to say to say the least, uh, whereas these areas have been very warm compared to normal, by the way. So for these areas here, um, I understand why a lot of you are wondering, where is that Arctic blast or where is that big cool down? Because we haven't had any of it and you have not seen any of that down there in Texas and Louisiana. It's been a small area that has been far above normal this summer. Uh, same story up here for a lot of the northern plains and upper Midwest, although these areas have been quite cooler actually more recently uh, and they've seen some of those more mild temperatures. For reference, here is the past 30 days. I'm going to move this forward a little bit uh, towards today. So here is kind of the second half of, or the first half of July and the second half of June here. We can see, again, things have been a little bit cooler up here in the plains than before. And we've still seen some below normal temperatures overall here for the east as well. Uh, but again, this heat wave has been pretty significant over New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, and even into southern Mississippi as well. Um, and then here we go. We're just going to keep going with this. Here's the past 15 days. And as you can see, we've seen a surge of warmth actually up the East Coast. So things have been quite warm for the first half here of July. And again, like I mentioned earlier, we've seen actually some pretty below normal temperatures here for the Northern Plains and Upper Midwest that have moved in. That is mostly due to this positive PNA that is set up. And this is what has allowed for these pretty consistent Arctic blasts to move in. Uh, this is what we've been talking about for a while. So this is just kind of the verification of what we've been talking about uh, that we're, we're seeing here. I've seen all the comments, a lot of people doubting that this is even happening at all. But here it is on screen, just so you know, uh, it really has been happening. It might just not be in your particular county. So it does vary from place to place. Uh, but the problem is, is I've done this before and we've still gotten a lot of negative comments that clearly did not watch the video at all. They just see the thumbnail, the title, and then they comment and then leave. They don't watch the video at all. So it's very, very hard uh, to give any sort of real information through a thumbnail and title. Uh, and it can't even be helped, unfortunately. Um, so here we go. We're going to move just a little bit more. And this is actually going to be in the future now. So here's the next 10 days of what we expect. So we continue to see... Uh, some cooler temperatures move into portions of the upper Midwest here and the Northeast, but this is not going to be significant. Uh, it's just going to be near normal to slightly below normal. Um, but clearly a lot of your warmth is mostly over the West here where we see a solidification here, if you will, of this positive PNA, which is the driving factor of this cold unbalance. Uh, Arctic air is moving in. It's just moving slowly enough to where it kind of warms up by the time it gets here. And it's very, very mild. But it is actually going to be quite a nice cool down from what we've been seeing, um, to say the least. I mean, if you're going from 90s to mid to low 80s, that is going to feel very, very nice for a lot of folks there. Um, so I hope you're looking forward to it. I know I am. Uh, let's just go ahead and take a look here at the upcoming storminess real quickly. As you can see, we have a bigger system on the way for this upcoming uh day today kind of late late or tomorrow better yet sunday uh the 16th here I got a little bit confused with what day it is it's confusing after a while uh we can see by the evening we see pretty much a lot of your east coast into the gulf coast here is dealing with some pretty consistent thunderstorms and then this kind of more arctic low is causing a lot of storms thunderstorms showers to move across this kind of northern plains midwest region 
here as well as the Great Lakes, so a little bit more stormy. Here's this low here, um, and that is kind of what's taking place, two separate systems at this point. As we move Monday into Tuesday, what we see is a more dramatic uh, jet stream here, so we're seeing a lot more of this going on. Again, with this forceful air from the north heading in like this, we see a funnel boundary uh, of sorts kind of set up here where we will see thunderstorms along that. We also see some thunderstorms trying to move along that jet stream here as well for the northern plains. And then we have some typical summertime thunderstorms taking place for some of the deeper south as well. But really, overall, Monday and Tuesday look a little bit quieter, don't they? Uh, let's see, as we move towards Tuesday evening, we do see some flaring up along that cold front, and it actually becomes a lot more significant as far as these thunderstorms are concerned. That's going to be for Tuesday, the 18th into Wednesday time frame. Uh, again, along that jet stream, we do see more thunderstorms moving along this. Uh, and then we're kind of seeing some influx of some southern moisture from Mexico, the Gulf of Mexico, and even the Pacific here into the southwest, where we do have some kind of rare summertime thunderstorms taking place for these areas. Semi-rare, that is. It's not like unheard of, but uh, a little bit unusual. By the time we're reaching Wednesday, this does look a little bit quieter as well. We do have this area over the Ohio Valley and the southeast here dealing with some thunderstorms. And then for the four corner states and surrounding areas into the plains, again, dealing with some thunderstorm activity. And then here for the northern plains and upper Midwest, we have another system. So there's multiple different things going on. Pretty typical of summertime, though, overall. Uh, Thursday looking a little bit more active, especially in the east here where we have just some thunderstorm activity through the Great Lakes, the northeast, the mid-Atlantic, uh, lots and lots of thunderstorm activity for corner states, plains, um, and just in general, this is like thunderstorm activity uh, as a rule of thumb with the summertime heat and the humidity and everything. You're more likely to see thunderstorms than showers, but there might be some showers in there as well. Those are pretty separate from what we're seeing though and going to be pretty sporadic. Uh, by Friday evening, this is what we're looking at. It's going to be the 21st. We see pretty consistent thunderstorm activity here in the east. So maybe another line underneath this low, a bit of a cold front rolling through, something like this. Could be what we're taking a look at. Warm front is up here. Uh, so that is that system there. We can see this trailing area, maybe an extension of this cold front a little bit, leading towards some activity in these areas also. We are seeing some pushback of warmth from the south, so maybe some of this continued heat for the Texas, Louisiana area, as well as New Mexico. Uh, so a lot of what we've already been seeing. As we continue to move through the pattern, I want to take us towards Sunday, the 23rd here. By that evening, there's a couple of areas to pinpoint for some scattered about isolated thunderstorm activity here. We see the northeast, the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, and then the southeast. And then again, the, the four corner states into the plains seeing their like fifth active day in a row of some sporadic thunderstorms taking place. And then by the time we're taking a look at Monday evening, Maybe our next bigger thunderstorm system beginning here for the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and southeastern Canada, uh, as well as the continued activity here in the four corner states and Rockies. And then we're seeing a little bit of some Gulf moisture trail its way up here into Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and uh, Oklahoma. And these areas could see some thunderstorms as a result of this. So some interesting things going on. And overall, this is what the total precipitation over the next 10 days would look like. As you can see, quite a bit around the east, so most it's per, it's a little bit more exclusive here than what we've been seeing over the past few weeks. But if you take it from the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and the deeper south eastward towards the east coast, you can see most areas are covered in yellow to reds, and that is gonna be above average for this next 10-day period. So especially here, if you were to pinpoint a couple of areas, um, for the deeper southeast here for Florida, southern Mississippi, and Alabama. Some here for the mid-Atlantic and northeast, as you can see. And then we have this pocket over the Ohio Valley. These three areas in particular seem to see the most precipitation according to this model. And that's where we're going to be watching for the most thunderstorms this upcoming 10 days. Anyway, be sure to subscribe for more daily uploads just like this one. Hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.